So one of the big ideas I've had lately is a quote-unquote home Labinux. So basically some type of like Proxmox server or something and that's controlling a router and everything's basically inside of one system so you can pick up and go and easily connect it at the next house. And some of this is to do with our filming and other things that we do when we're traveling back and forth because as you know, as we've talked about some of the other videos, we have multiple houses and we're not always in the same place. And one of the things that's always stopped me from doing it, and I guess I say stopped because I could do it with PFSense or something, is just the, you know, routing capabilities and stuff of creating that separate network. Well, I was sitting here playing with the Raspberry Pi today and trying to think about some video ideas and whatnot. And I know we got a bunch, I promised you guys, uh, more content on Kubernetes. And we haven't even looked at that, to be honest with you. And we are back in Maine. I do have the hardware here to do it and that's kind of sad for me but that's coming and I hate to tell you some of this is exactly for that coming. Alright so I'm here at my desktop. We have two different containers here that are running and one's titled Home Lab Router and the other one is titled uh, Home Lab DHCP Server. And what's going on here is we have internet that's coming in here and notice we only have one internet interface so we have internet coming in here and it's coming off my network on VLAN 30 and I have a separate bridge created for VLAN 30 here and then we have internet here no DHCP or anything as or no IP address or anything assigned but this is VLAN 100 on a second bridge so if we had containers or anything operating on this server we could operate them with internet access and community and connection to everything on VLAN 100 was the goal so if we we fire up this Kali container which you notice it's on VMBR1 and we open the console here we can type in IPA or IP address or whatever and get the printout and you can see that we're at 192.168.100.4 that's definitely not an IP range if you guys follow along with my videos that you've probably ever seen before. And you can see from my web URL, it's not an IP range that our default Proxmox server is on. And this video is basically about how I got that set up. So running APT update, you can see that we do have internet connectivity. You can also just run a ping to one dot and you can see that we communicate there. All right. So we're gonna close this out here and I'm gonna kind of walk through the process of what we did here. And I'm gonna do that by creating an actual another bridge. And so I'm gonna go up here to Linux bridges and we'll call this VMBR2 and the port down here is going to be ETH zero, just like before. And then we're gonna put a period and let's just put this on 50. So it's gonna be VLAN 50. We can hit apply. And now if we're, if we go back to the same Kali container and shut it down or stop it rather, we can go in here, edit it, and we can move over to uh, VMBR two and as soon as this is stopped we can go ahead and start it console and the console will take a few seconds to start up it this is a raspberry pi and it is rather slow we've talked to that before we should come alive here in a second and be able to log in okay so all we're waiting for that to load because it's taking incredibly long let's go ahead and create another couple of containers and we'll wait until we can actually verify there's no internet on that until we actually start configuring the containers but we're going to need two separate containers so let's Let's just call this uh, VMBR2 and we'll call this router. I don't know if router is the exact right name for this, but it definitely works in my mindset. And then we'll set up a password. I am going to go in here and I'm going to choose Debian Bullseye. And that's basically the latest Debian stable release. We're going to use 8 gigs, 1 CPU, 512 memory. We're going to set this first connection as DHCP. This is the one that's going to connect to the home network or the incoming internet and feed it to the rest of the Proxmox server. And this, again, is going to be on that VLAN 30 that I showed you so vmbr0 then we're going to keep this the same as the host and we're going to finish this out notice that's creating let's look back here and we do indeed have internet now so we can log in with root password works all right and this time we can type in an ipa and you see that we don't have an ip address 
nor can we ping out to one dot like we could before. All right, so I'm gonna shut that down. We'll come back and we'll, we'll see what happens once we start getting some of this stuff configured. All right, so our first container is built here and we can close that and you can see it's right here and we're gonna need to add that next bridge to it. So let's go ahead and add the MBR2 to it and we're gonna call this ETH1. We're gonna leave it static and let's go ahead and give this 192.168. And since we're on VLAN 150, let's give it 150 and then we'll give this, since it is going to be the router, we'll give it one and it's gonna be a slash 24 network because we wanna go from zero to 255. So then the gateway address, this is where it actually gets funnier, at least a little bit different than some of our other net setups. This is going to be 192, 168, 150, and it's going to be one. We are the gateway. We are creating the gateway to the network here. So we can go ahead and hit add and that'll set up our gateway. All right. So now we need to create that second container it is going to be the VMBR2, and this is going to be our DHC p server so we can assign you know ip addresses and whatnot automatically and we'll go ahead and give this a password we're going to again use debian bullseye and again eight gigs one cpu 512 memory and we're going to go static again and we're going to set this up as 192 168 150 and this one's going to be two on a slash 24 and this gateway is gonna be 192, 168, 150, and it's gonna be one, pointing back at that router server that we're gonna set up port forwarding on. And now we're gonna hit next and next and confirm and let this one build as well. So this one can build in the background. I'll, we start up our first one and we'll load our console. And again, we're kind of a little bit slow here loading. All right, and we can log in with root and that password we set up. And we probably do wanna change our username but for the sake of this video, we're not going to do that. I'm sure you guys know how to do all of that. And let's just run an APT update and everything should be up. Now we actually need to install IP tables. And we're going to do that with the APT install IP tables command, hitting enter. And then we're going to hit Y. All right. So now that we have IP tables, we need to start to configure IP tables in order to do this forwarding. And the first thing we need to do to start configuring IP tables is to edit this uh, sysctl.config file. So we're just going to use nano to do that. But in order to do that, we're going to need to install nano. So let's go, let's back up here and run an apt install nano. And now let's actually open that sysctl config file by using nano. And we're going to scroll down through this and we're going to look for that IP forward. So net.ipv4 dot ip underscore slash forward equals one and we're going to uncomment that and we're going to press control x y and enter to save it. in order to apply this configuration we're going to use the command sysctl space dash p and this is going to apply the command and get the forwarding process working now it's not going to work immediately outside of the box we're going to have to use some ip tables rules in order to forward the traffic from eth0 to eth1 so let's press enter and get that configured. And now we'll start applying the rules that we need to apply to IP tables in order to start that process. We're gonna run three separate rules here. And let me extend this window out a little bit so you can see them all in separate lines. But the first line is going to install the NAT uh, configuration for this for ETH1, and it's gonna masquerade it. Then it's going to, the next rule is gonna forward traffic from ETH1 one to ETH zero and it's going to accept it. The next rule is going to forward traffic from ETH zero to ETH one and again it's going to accept all, all traffic. It's not going to block it. So I'm not great with IP tables rules and I will admit I am copying and pasting these and I'll provide those for you um, in the comment section. So I'm going to hit enter and it's going to apply all of these rules and the last rule that we need to apply is a post route rule and 
And again, this rule basically finally finishes setting up the NAT configuration where we're going to show the router all one IP address, and that's the IP address connected to the ETH0 port and all other traffic inside of ETH1 or the VMBR2 um, bridge, hub, switch, whatever you want to call it inside of Proxmox is going to be passed through and made look like it's all the traffic on the IP address of ETH0. And we need to just enter ETH0 here to make this happen and press enter. All right, so the last step I need to do here is install a set of software that's going to make these rules persistent. So IP table rules by default will delete themselves and disappear as uh, we reboot our system. So if this system ever reboots, it'll no longer work. So we're going to install IP tables persistent and this is going to keep these rules. And we want to make sure we say yes, that we want to copy the current IP table rules for IPv4. And for good measure, I'm going to copy for IPv6, even though there's no IPv6 set up. Okay, so now that the forwarding is set up, we can go ahead and test this. And we'll use that same Kali container that we formally put on VMBR2, but there's no DHCP server here. So we can't use DHCP this time. So we're going to press edit and we're going to go to static and we're going to enter the IP address 192.168.150 and we can just make this three and it's a slash 24 network just like we know and then we can enter 192.168.151 because that's our gateway that's the container that we just configured here a second ago to forward all that traffic and act as a NAT so we can press OK and we can start that container back up here and open the console and wait for the console to activate. So now that we're logged in, of course, I just always run an IPA. It's kind of out of habit. We can see that we have an IP address and we can run an APT update and we can see that we are in working and communicating with the internet. We can further check that by running a ping to one dot and you can see that we're pinging one dot here. All right, so I'm just pressing control C, terminating this and again, running shutdown to turn that container. So the next thing we need to do is set up our DHCP server and we're of course going to have to start that and in. All right so we can log into this server and just like always we're running an APT update and we'll update this and if there is updates available or updates that we need to do we can go ahead and uh, install them. So you can see here there's a lot of confusion going on and we uh, misconfigured the bridge. So we have our IP address here set up that we set up on um, but it's also getting a DHCP IP address of from that server and kind of really confused at the moment. So let's just go ahead and we'll close this console window here and we'll hit leave. And then let's go ahead and stop this and hit yes. And that's kind of the fastest way to get this container shut. Let's hit edit and we're going to change this bridge to VMBR2 where it's supposed to be. And we're going to hit OK. Now we should be able to start this back up, open the console and things should work a little better. All right, so now we can again check the internet and let's first run an IPA and we see that we have our IP address, the one that we set up in the configuration. So now we can run an ET update and we have an update. Now, if we ever did have packages to apply an update, which we don't at the moment, we would wanna also run an APT upgrade at this point and make sure we upgrade it. So the first thing we need to do to install a DHCP server is install install the server and we're going to use the apt install and we're going to install the isc-dhcp-server and that's the software package that we'll be creating this server with today so let's press enter y enter again so we now have the dhcp server installed and i know this sea of red can be kind of intimidating but it's just because we don't have the dhcp server configured so let's go ahead and start the configuration process after we install nano do that we're going to run apt install nano now you can do this all with vim if you want but i don't like vim as well as i like nano so the next thing you need to do to start configuring this is make some edits to the etc dhcp dhcpd.config file and the first one i'm going to do is disable this now for my servers i'm going to add one dot and for a backup i'll use google and i basically only do this because those are the two addresses i remember i'm going to uncomment authoritative and I'm going to continue down and under 
subnets this is the one we want and let's go ahead and remove all the comments here and start the configuration so the first thing we're going to do here is enter our IP range 192.168.150 and then zero because it's where it's going to start we need to change our subnet mask to a slash 24 subnet mask or 255 255 255 zero now for our range um, let's give ourselves a little bit of room here at the bottom for static servers so let's go 192 168 150 and let's start our IP addresses at 100 that way we know anything under 100 is going to be available for static and then we'll run this to 192 168 150 and I'm gonna go 200 so that's 200 D uh, DHCP addresses that should be enough for us hopefully now for our router configuration here we're going to specify that NAT gateway that we set up and that's going to be 192 68 150 and 1 all right so we can hit Control X and Y to save and enter and then we need to edit the default configuration for the server and this is basically so we can tell it what port to use we're going to go down here to interfaces IPv4 we're not using IP6 and we're going to enter in our case on this Raspberry Pi ETH0. Now if you're using a different port or your system called it a different port for whatever reason you're going to want to make sure that you enter that and not zero. Now we'll hit X, Y, enter and if we did the entire configuration right we can now try and use system CTL to start up the ISC DHCP server and that's what we're going to do here with this command. And it started up no error messages at all. So the last thing we need to do is make sure this ISC DHCP server automatically starts up when we restart this container. That way if we have a power failure or anything else or do maintenance on this, we don't have to go in and manually start that. And we're going to do that with the system CTL enable ISC DHCP server command shown here. Now let's hit enter and it's executing the process. Okay, so now we should have a DHCP server running. So so if we head back to that fancy call e container that we've been using, we can go ahead and edit this network configuration, and we're going to edit this time to use DHCP. So now this time when we boot this up, we should see an IP address get assigned to this container. So let's go ahead and start it in no console. All right, and we can log in. We can run an IPA, and running IPAs shows us that we are indeed getting 192.168.150.101. So we did get an IP address from that DHCP server. Now we can run a ping and we can ping one dot and pinging one dot shows us that we do indeed have internet connection. So we'll just go ahead and stop this and we'll run an AT update and this will further confirm that we have working internet and we're resolving DNS and we are. So now we have a working bridge that's bridging our internet from our ETH0 or our VMBR1 port which is VLAN 30 on this particular particular server over to VLAN 150. Now when we set up any devices or any containers on VMBR2 we're going to have internet connection and we're going to be able to connect to them and use them. If you found this video helpful in your projects or informative at all please consider liking and sharing to help VE continue to grow. Thank you and have a good night.